We're Trent and Allie, and renovating a camp trailer on the family farm in Utah has been one adventure after another. We took a little break, and now there's a tornado! We've been working on the garden, raising chicks, and having a blast with the goats. Oh, there we go! You guys like your new goat structure? Your leaning pile of garbage? Oh! <laughs> That was awesome. Today we're making headway on the kitchen. I hate finished carpentry. I'm trying something brand new. Oh, Trent! Oh my gosh. It's really good milk. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and enjoy, as today we take on our newest role as cheese makers. Are you ready to rumble? Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful day here in Utah. The sun is shining. There's barely any clouds in the sky. It's already starting to get hot, which means it's gonna get really hot today because it's only like 8 a.m. I already went and watered the garden. I came back to get my jar. I'm gonna go get some milk this morning, and we have some old bread that got left in the cellar that nobody knew about, so the goats get a nice little treat. Allie, yes? you look absolutely adorable today. Look at this girl. It's all Look at you! It's already 8 a.m. and it's like probably 75 to 80 degrees. So this is all I can wear to stay warm, <laughs> to stay cool. And uh, I have to wear these boots if I'm going to go out into the pasture because there's these thorns. You honey, you don't have to justify your outfit. You look adorable. <laughs> the real question is, how is Frank doing this morning? How are you doing? When we first got Oso, we thought he was gonna be a barn dog and he's ended up staying in the house the entire time we've had him. He's about four months old now and every day we're like, today's the day, he's gotta go live in the barn. <sighs> but he's a cute puppy and we just keep delaying it because we're having so much fun hanging out with him in the house. So now every time Trent goes outside, he takes Oso with him. We're slowly gonna break Oso into the barn life. It's a good dog. Every time I come out here into the garden, I'm pretty shocked about the progress that's being made. Now, all of a sudden, we have tomatoes coming in, we have huge potatoes, zucchinis, squash, basil, herbs, cilantro. Any day now, we're gonna pick a very big salad. Good morning. Oh, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. Oh, so you're supposed to protect the goats, not eat the goat's poop. Literally all he does when I bring him out here is eat goat poop. Good boy. So we've been collecting goat milk for a couple weeks now and storing most of it so that we can make goat cheese. We've never made goat cheese before. We've heard mixed reviews on how easy it is, but we both love goat cheese. And today is the first day we're gonna attempt to make goat cheese. We also love a challenge. So let's see how hard this is. So these are our two prospects, our two jugs full of goat's milk. This one has sat for a little while. You can see the thick cream that's kind of settled here at the top. You might be thinking, wow guys, very um, ingenious of you to be storing goat milk in coffee creamer containers. <laughs> it's also very confusing in the mornings when you're, tr when you're not awake, when you're trying to just grab some creamer and you accidentally grab the goat milk. <laughs> So that was today's goat milk and it filled up both containers pretty much to the brim and that was nine days of milking just in the morning. I'm really excited to start making the cheese. Like I said, my mom's gonna help us, but first I need to have a cup of coffee. All right, there's been enough lollygagging, it's time to make goat cheese. We're doing this, we've never done this before. We have an idea of what's gonna happen, but honestly, we have no idea if it's actually gonna work. We're not using rennet or culture the way some recipes say you should. We're just gonna use the milk and lemon juice. So basically, you take the goat milk and you bring it to a pretty high temperature, I think like 165 or 185 degrees. You add the lemon juice and the acidity combined with the heat forces a curdle, so. 
We don't know what we're doing. We're, we're gonna not. We're gonna force a curdle. We're gonna force a curdle. I know Gloria's excited. <laughs> Go check on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it is my mom's destiny to make goat cheese. She has pretty much everything we need. I don't, I don't know what it's called, but this is a special. A double boiler. This is a double boiler. It's a special device that you use to boil things. We have about a gallon of goat milk. We're gonna be using the double boiler. We're gonna be heating up the goat milk. And I think the first thing that we're gonna do is start making lemon juice because you have to use fresh fresh squoze lemons in order to have lemon juice. Freshly squeezed. Fresh squoze. One quart right Mom, there. Mom, this container is a thousand years old. You no, can't even not. see it's the quart It's only like 45 mark. years old. And it's the best container I've got. Goat's milk, check. Really old plastic Tupperware measuring container, check. Let's Probably do this. I know this looks like creamer, but it's not. Every season. So we've decided to do this in four batches today. We're gonna to do four different flavors and that's gonna give us four opportunities to learn from our mistakes. Uh, we're a little worried that the thermometer might be a little bit old, it might not be super accurate, but we have good goat milk, we have fresh lemon juice from real lemons, and it's looking really, it's looking like it's working. So in a second we're gonna find out by adding the lemon juice if it actually is gonna curdle. We should know almost immediately. About 165. 165. We're going. We need to get to 180. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. Let it sit for a second. Now add the lemon juice. And then it just says to let it sit. So within a minute, we should see. Wow! It's working! <laughs> you guys! Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> so now that whole thing is cheese or what? Yeah. Well, we're going to strain it into a cheese cloth. <laughs> Not yeah, yet. Yeah, it's done. Wow. You yeah. got to cut it. Yeah. Slice it up. It's over. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. So what you're seeing here before your very eyes is rotten milk. <laughs> I don't know if this is how you know you're getting old or this is how you know you're a farmer or what, but we're all really enjoying watching milk curdle, which sounds like the most boring thing in the world but we're having a blast. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not a scientist or a cook or a farmer or anything, but <laughs> I think that the clear liquid is the whey. It's like the whey that comes out of the milk and then the cheese and all the fat curdles and creates the cheese curds. So at the end you have cheese and you have whey. And my mom is gonna drink all that whey cause she's trying to get yoked like your boy here. <laughs> And that is where the poem comes from, curds and whey. <laughs> eating, her, eating her curds and whey. I have little, no idea what little that is. Little Miss Muffet. Little Miss Muffet sat on the tuffet eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat, sat down, down beside her. <laughs> and frightened Miss Muffet away. You're going to eat the whey. I'm not eating the whey. You're Little Miss Muffet. Oh my god. <laughs> You hold this and I'm gonna splash burning liquid all over you, okay? Okay, that'll be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Here. Cut it. 100% the best part of this entire process is watching Trent and Gloria do this together. <laughs> this string is a terrible idea. Why didn't you just get some real string? I don't have any string! <laughs> okay, stop. Stop holding the cabinet on the wall and hold this, <laughs> hold the cheese. We 
we're experiencing. We do know. We are pros at this. Oh yeah, we're pros, guys. I don't know if you do that. <laughs> We've been trying to figure out what to flavor our cheese with. So I think we're gonna do one just salt, one with Italian seasonings, oregano, basil, one with rosemary, thyme, sage, and then the last one, my very favorite, a little bit of salt, but mostly cranberry and pecans. Pecans? Pe pecans. Pecans? Pecans? Pecans. Pecans? Pecans. I think I say pecans. I don't know what I say. I'm excited for it's it. It's a tomato, way. tomato kind of thing. <laughs> let us know if you say pecans or pecans. I don't know how you're going to differentiate how you spell them, but let us know in the comments. It smells so good. I know, it's going to be great. I don't know how people on cooking shows do it, but I never ever see an elbow or an arm in a cooking show. We're going to nickname this segment Arms and Elbows. <laughs> because I am right-handed and I put my right arm up every oh, time. Oh, and I'm left-handed, so right. I put my left arm up every right. time. That's so like, the problem. We just need to switch sides. Yeah. Oh. We're backwards. There's no arms and elbows on this side of the kitchen. They're all on this side <laughs> oh, of the that's kitchen. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to get this fourth cheese ball hung up. They have to sit for at least two hours before we can test them and see how delicious they are. But it's about midday and it's time for us to get working on the camper. This goat cheese is coming out really well. We're really excited about it. But before we get to work on the trailer, we've worked up an appetite. Even though it's midday, we need to eat some breakfast. And luckily, today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. So I don't know if you guys are like me and when you were a kid you used to watch cartoons and you used to eat cereal and cereal became like an integral part of your childhood. But as you grew up you realized cereal is just full of sugar and it's probably garbage and it's not very good for you. Magic Spoon is definitely changing the game. They make this cereal that looks and tastes exactly like real cereal but it's high protein, it's low carb, and it's zero grams of sugar. And actually it's pretty delicious. So Magic Spoon makes four different flavors. They make blueberry, fruity, frosted, and cocoa, just like all the cereals that you used to eat as a kid. The best part about Magic Spoon is it's basically a protein shake in the form of a bowl of cereal. So if you're one of those people that wants to stay healthy, you want to increase your protein intake, this is definitely a delicious breakfast, but it's also a really good midday or evening snack. I caught myself eating it before we go to bed. It's just a nice way to get an extra shot of protein in a delicious bowl of cereal. So if you guys are interested in trying out Magic Spoon, jump down into our description, click the link, and get a four pack variety box with free shipping. <sighs> Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to work. Oh my goodness. Woo! I don't have any work clothes that are suitable for these temperatures. You got your jogging clothes on? Ba basically. <laughs> I just wanna cut my coveralls into short coveralls. Yeah, but then they'll be ruined. Exactly, I just need another pair that I can cut. Yeah. So I have a, a summer and a winter pair because it's like, my clothes get destroyed working out here. Coveralls are perfect, but they're so hot. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're gonna get started today. We're going to get this countertop flipped over, thrown on top of these cushions here, and I think, we're gonna install the sink. Woo! Ready? Upside down again? Oh what are you doing in here? Frank, not allowed in here. Get out of here, Frank! Are you so excited? You're a hot dog, huh? You're a hot dog, I know. This is your new home, Frank. This is proving to be a real issue. Okay. I'm gonna have to run inside and grab the brackets that mount it down. Okay. And we're just gonna throw some of that uh, clear sealant on there. And it's just gonna go screw where it goes. The, screw the brackets in and call it a day. Just kidding, temporary pause. We are scout, we're in the middle of a scavenger hunt. We need some very specific bolts that came with the sink to mount the sink to the countertop and we can't find them. So the perks of uh, living and working and building all in the same space pretty much. Success? Found them. Oh, where were they? I don't know, but it's so hot out there. I think I've decided we're getting AC. <laughs> yeah? I can't do it. The one thing I'm worried about is the AC will go in this hole because yeah. the, the RV is pre-wired for air conditioning. But when you put it in here, there's like a thing that goes inside that's like four inches tall. And oh. when I'm standing on the ground, I can walk under it, but if I get like excited, I might like 
I like to scalp myself. Good All thing right. Grumpy Trent. Grumpy Grandpa Trent never gets excited. I just get like a little, oh, 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 but I never <laughs> exactly. like actually leave the ground. <laughs> I'm going to use the plumber's caulk and basically glue this to the countertop. And then we're gonna put these little brackets in there, screw them in for some reinforcement. Should be crystal clear, should look beautiful. Should, 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 we'll see what happens. This is another one of those moments where you only get one shot. If we mess this up, we are stuck with however it comes out. So really trust in Trent on this one. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. All right, that looks like it's going to dry nicely. There's a perfect little bead of the siliconized caulk that's going to dry clear all the way around. No leakage, no bacteria seepage, easy to clean surface. I think it came out pretty good. I think it looks awesome. Good job. Now we just need to work on getting the drain put in. Actually, first, we need to get this countertop mounted. No way! Yeah, baby. Oh, things are happening. I'm excited. We took a little break, and now there's a tornado. this rain <laughs> it's not even like real rain it's like utah rain it'll just like kind of sprinkle for like 10 minutes and then it's over <sighs> it is frustrating though hopefully it just blows on by and the temperature stays down and we have a little bit of time to work because i gotta get this trim finished on this bench already and then we got some goat cheese to eat Storm's not over. It's raining again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was really looking forward to getting this trim done on this bench, and we're gonna try and sit out this wind and this rain for at least a few more minutes and see kinda how it feels. The wind is blowing really hard, which means the storm should just kinda blow through quickly, and it doesn't look like there's that much rain, so hopefully it's done in a half an hour or so we can get back to work. Are you guys doing okay? Hi, everybody. The chickens are all doing really well. They put themselves to bed at night now. When we come in, they all run over to us. Having chickens has definitely been a really easy, fun way to have farm animals. What do you think? I hate Finnish carpentry. <laughs> Go to the table saw. I've been waiting all my life for something. I've been down the darkest roads and up in the clouds. But I've always felt that something's missing. You're a mess. So I don't know if you guys are curious as to why we're putting all these edging pieces on, but if you build plywood structures or you build benches or cabinets out of plywood, there's this unfinished edge that you have when you butt two pieces of plywood together, unless you cut them on a 45. And if you cut them on a 45, plywood's like really brittle and it just doesn't work very well. So you have this exposed edge. So what we do is we take this trim and you cover the exposed edge and it gives it a nice finished look, but it also makes it look very professional. Now, this type of stuff is not super heavy, but it does add weight overall. Pretty much everything we're doing to the trailer adds weight. Now, I've been keeping a close eye on the gross, the max gross vehicle weight rating of this trailer, and once we are completely done with the build, we're gonna have it weighed, and if it's over the gross vehicle weight rating, we're gonna upgrade the axles or the tires or whatever needs to be done. I'll reinforce the frame if I have to. We're keeping an eye on the weight. I know a lot of people are very concerned about that, but I'm keeping my mind on it. 
We're gonna make sure this thing doesn't fall apart when we go traveling around. That would literally be worst case scenario. If we built this thing and then it fell apart while we were driving, I would probably cry. <laughs> All right. And that right there is the last piece of trim that we're gonna be installing, well, for today. We still have the corner molding that needs to go back there, and we still need to do all of the corner molding for the flooring, but that's the last of the poplar trim that's gonna be going around the bench, around the tables, around the cabinet here. Pretty much all of it's done. So now all that's left to do is get the bench painted, do the corner molding. Actually, there's a lot to do. I'm not even gonna list it. <laughs> It is getting late though, and I feel like we've had a pretty productive day. Even though we had, you know, like a baby hurricane, tornado, rainstorm <laughs> yeah. come through. Uh, I think maybe let's clean up and go inside and try some goat cheese. What do you think? 100%. All right, let's go. Is that a Frank boy? Is that a Frank boy? Are you so excited? I'm sorry you can't come out here. You want to eat the chickens. You can come out for a minute. And the goats. Right? Everything's closed? Yeah. yeah come on now. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't eat the poop. Get out of there. Straight for the poop every time. You thought the horse poop was bad? Goat poop is really Frank bad. <laughs> loves goat poop. <sighs> if we haven't mentioned already, we are very well fed here at Glorious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go plain. I don't even know if I need a knife with this. I don't even know if I need a cracker with this. <laughs> 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 you are gonna love that. Yeah? It's really good. It just tastes like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Try this one. That's really good. It could use some sweetness, you know, for yeah. my teeth, but... <laughs> I, I would like it a little sweeter, too. I think it's pretty good. The rosemary and thyme is a pungent flavor. <laughs> well, we've got some learning to do, but at least the cheese is all turned out edible. At least we think they're edible. We might all die tonight, who knows? <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you show us by giving us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna take advantage of their deal, make sure you click the link in our description, and we will see you guys on the next one. Adios, guys. <laughs>